on example 16. Part A, use the squeeze theorem to show that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is equal to 1. Hmm, that thing looks familiar. Uh, well, here's a question, like, why do we got to use the squeeze theorem? Why can't we use the other analytical methods that we've already covered? Well, the uh, simple answer is that none of them work. Like, there's nothing to factor. There's nothing to rationalize. There's no, like, common denominator. It's not a complex fraction that I have to resolve. There's nothing to, like, expand out and simplify. So none of those methods that we covered so far apply to this specific limit, which, like, is super important for some strange reason. Okay. So we're going to use the squeeze theorem, so let's kind of review what it is that we have to start off with. So remember that the first thing that we need to do is establish this inequality here over some sort of interval. In other words, we have to find a function down below ours, one up above ours, that meet at that limit value, and for us that limit value is 1, right? So I have to, whoa, where are you going? I have to establish these two things first in order to be able to conclude that the limit exists and is equal to 1 also by the squeeze theorem. Okay, so let's graph sine x over x. That's our starting place here. I need to find a function, first of all, that's down below here, that's less than or equal to sine x over x, but also meets right there at 1. And, uh, like, there's tons of things that work, but the one that we're going to use is this one in blue here. Do you know what function that is? Take a second. What do you think that one is? Looks roughly per per uh, pe pe periodic to me, and it does go through 0, 1 here, and it does hit the x-axis of pi over 2. That looks like cosine. As a matter of fact, it is. So notice that cosine of x is less than or equal to sine x over x. Well, first of all, that's the that's part of the inequality that we wanted to uh, we wanted to establish. But notice that's not true everywhere. Look, it hits right here and then it switches. Now the blue one's on top. Now the blue one's on top. And remember, that doesn't matter as long as we can find an interval over which our inequality is true. And we can. Let's say, for example, we just go from pi over two to negative pi over two to pi over two. Then it's okay, right? All right, and then also the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x is equal to 1, right? So on cosine, cosine is a continuous function, so, like, I can just directly substitute it in there. I get the y value as 1. It's good to go. All right, so the, the bottom part is taken care of. Now we need the top part. We need a function that is greater than or equal to the green one and then meets at 1. And again, there's lots of things that we can pick. We're going to pick something super easy y equals 1, right? So notice again that sine x over x is less than or equal to 1, and this is true over the interval that we picked, right, from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, but it's actually true everywhere. So this sine graph, the one that's in green, the sine x over x, it just gets closer and closer to the x-axis. It never gets above that 1 again, okay? And the limit of a constant function is equal to that constant, so we're good to go with the top function. So we have our inequality, we have both of our limits being equal to 1, then the squeeze theorem is supposed to give us the conclusion that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is equal to 1. Now, as far as this goes, we just kind of eyeballed some, uh, some functions, one down below and one up above, but it wasn't terribly rigorous. So in the second part of this, we're going to establish that inequality. Okay, so we're going to go through and see why specifically we chose one, because there was an infinite number of things we could have picked that were up above here, and an infinite number down below that we could have picked. Why did we pick those specific ones? And the answer has to do with being able to analytically establish these inequalities here so that I can actually use the squeeze theorem. And so we'll take a look at that in the next video.